clicking, and clicking, clicking. No, with that, clicking, with that clicking. great, with that great strength comes great, re great responsibility. AP. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Did you know that? I have no. I, I don't know. You can't have that great strength. With hey, hey, check this out. Before I, I abuse forget, strength when I have it. That's, that's what I do. Before I, I forget, check this out. What is that? It's a camel. You don't know what a camel is. You've never seen a camel before. I've never seen a camel before. Hey, the what? camel's going to APs. <laughs> no, my wife. My wife was clearing out old boxes that we've had that have just been like sitting around forever and stuff like that, and like uh, you know, in like a garage and stuff. And uh, <laughs> this was sitting out. This was sitting on the shelf. And I was like, "Hey, that's that was the uh, that was the camel that Nabil got for me in Pakistan." Really? Um, yes, yeah, so when he was still a Muslim. This so this would have been like two thousand two or something like that 2002 maybe um but yeah so this is after 9 11 and a lot of my jokes at him back in the day would have something to do with a camel like almost every joke had something to do <laughs> with a camel and then so he went to pakistan for for a trip and then came brought me back this uh this camel but um it, it was interesting he came back and he said that when he got to the airport in Pakistan, he was coming out and he said uh, some guys approached him and they offered him. I forget exactly what it was, but he said it's the it's the equivalent of like 15 to 20 thousand dollars just for his passport. Said, give us your pa said, hey, look, give us your passport. We're going to give you a pile of money. Give us your passport. Don't report it missing for a few days. That's it. Deal. Um, he didn't do it, but uh, that's the deal they wanted to make. Um, give them his passport for a few days uh, and then report it missing and they would give him a pile of money for that. And I, I'm guessing I'm guess cause this is the, you know, this is the, these are the days of Al Qaeda, but um, I'm guessing they're just looking for people who are entering the airport going, Oh, he kind of looks like so-and-so that way. So-and-so could actually use that passport to get where he's needing to go. Uh, so let's ask him for his passport. Creepy stuff. That is, that is funny, man. All right, so what are we talking about? We're talking about Ali Dalla. The gift that every... Is, but there is a very interesting method. You have just revealed something. We can't just move on to the next... No, anyway, let's just let's move on. But that's that's very... I think I'm going to start applying that. I'm going to start trying to buy people's passports. I don't know. But anyway, let's move on to Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa. Man, we keep talking... For years, I've been calling these guys gold mines. Do you want to destroy a gold mine? No. You want that gold mine to keep producing nuggets of pure gold. And that's what oh. we get from Ali Dawa. That's what we get from Muhammad Ajab. That's what we get from Sheikh Uthman. That's what we get from Daniel Hakikachu. That's what we're going to get from Andrew Tate and Sneeko and all of these guys. Gold mines. Absolute gold mines. So, um, it's absolute gold mine. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm a cause I'm a gold mine, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, hey, Pete. you just mentioned uh, Nabil, Nabil, and uh, everyone's saying like, "Rest in peace, Nabil." Nabil uh, loved and so on. This reminds me of um, when we were uh, driving together. You started telling me a story about Nabil and a song, um, uh, which was very, very interesting. A song came on, and I think you started telling a story about how Nabil reacted to this song, or something like that. And then that was a very interesting, very sentimental, very emotional moment. And then, and then you started crying, like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I remember that. I remember the yeah. crying part. <laughs> no, so what you're what you're referring to is um, got Rich Rich Mullins. Yeah, you you and me listen to this Rich Mullins song. Uh, there's more that rises in the morning than the sun. We listened to that song. Uh, but I told you that one of the last times I was hanging out with Nabil, we're driving down the highway and we're playing that. That song's playing and we're both we're both singing the song. But I mean, you know, he's he's got, you know, stage four cancer and stuff like that. And then it's about. Uh, well, anyway, it's a cool song. Those of you who've heard it. Um, so if I stand, let me stand on the promise that you'll pull me through. Right. And uh, we're singing that like just blasting as we're as we're driving down the highway. And I was like, gosh, I should be recording this, man. 
I should be recording. I should be recording us singing this song about trusting God no matter what. Um, but then I was like, ah, to kind of ruin it if I pull out a camera right now. So I'll just let it slide. But yeah, don't know what to do in those situations where you're a content creator. You want to, you want to, uh, you want to record, but it also, it kind of screws things up. You're all, Hey, oh, something's happening. Let me pull out the camera here. So, yeah. well, so. Hey, well, you told the story on, uh, on camera to me and I'm still supposed to publish that one day. Maybe yeah. You started and then AP cried for like three hours straight after hearing this <laughs> powerful story. And then he said, he finally gets the deep meaning of the song. <laughs> so, uh, we're I didn't talking to pay attention to the song, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about our good friend, Ali Dawa, one of the goats. You keep, you keep, you keep wondering who's going to do the most to destroy Islam. And, uh, you know, Ali Dawa doesn't seem like he has the, the mental tools to be the best at destroying Islam, but then he does something. He's got the popularity. He's got the popularity so that every dumb thought that pops into his head, he can, uh, he can just jump in with it. And that's pretty cool. So, uh, and you also have a certain appeal. Mohammed Hijab said that Ali Dawa um, appeals to, to 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 the younger people, to kids, and stuff like that. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I wonder. I wonder why that is. Like, a, like lots of things. I get it, but with if you, in other words, if you, if I didn't know what the actual case was, and I said, okay, here's Mohammed Hijab and him thumping on his chest, ah, me strong than you, me so strong, me strong than you, and then you've got beside him this little pipsqueak going, oh. Right. And you said, which one of these guys is going to be most popular? I said, oh, Muhammad Hijab by far. Um, but Ali Dawa is actually uh, seems to be more popular. And so it, it's, uh, I don't know, one of life's great mysteries. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, you'll recall, because we did a live stream on your show, when Ali Dawa admitted that the uh, the scientific miracles argument has been debunked and he called it much to the dismay of many of his viewers, he called, he said that it had been, he called it absolute nonsense. Yeah. He called the, the argument absolute nonsense, right? Let's, uh, oh, what's he up? He said, he said the scientific miracles narrative is absolute nonsense. Not all of uh, it, but you know, it doesn't even make sense, but yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. Let's go ahead and review that clip because it's short. I mean, it's from a longer video, but there's an actual short clip where he says these things. So, because ladies and gentlemen, we already went through that other video. We'll show a short clip from it, but then he posted a new video, which we, uh, we discussed on Thaddeus's stream. But I realized afterwards, I wanted to talk about this a bit more because there is some very interesting stuff in Ali's new video where he doubles down, insisting that the scientific argument, uh, has been destroyed. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the original. He also, he published this new video uh, because of you and me so in, in reaction to us because we talked about it and others mm -hmm. did too. And he mentions us in that, in that new video too. But yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, so he had to, he had to he had to expose us. He had to expose <laughs> us. Had to expose us. Yeah. All right. Let's see the original <laughs> clip here. Look, it might be that Andrew Tate came to Islam for the wrong reasons. Oh, he came to well, Islam for what? the wrong reasons. He but... may be staying in Islam for the right reasons. How? I one of the reasons I accepted Islam was the scientific miracles. I'll be honest with you. And now we know that this whole scientific miracles was absolute nonsense, not total. He's going to say not total, and he's going to explain in his, his new video what he means by that. But it's weird to go from absolute nonsense to not total. Wait, what, do you know what absolute means? <laughs> do you know what absolute nonsense would be? Not total. But then he goes back to saying that it's been completely debunked. Let me back up just so when he says uh, not totally. He's trying to he's trying to cover his tracks because he knows his fans are going to flip out. But this whole scientific miracles was absolute nonsense, not to in total. But guess what? Allah led me to Islam. One of the reasons was because of the scientific miracles. And guess what? Did I leave Islam when this whole scientific miracle thing got debunked? No, I stayed because I grew in faith. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran to the Bedouins. Don't say you have believed, but rather say you have submitted. They will uh, this is interesting, by the way, that he says Allah used scientific miracles arguments, which he believes, which he now believes are absolute nonsense and they've been debunked. But Allah used absolute complete deception to guide him to Islam. That's what Allah does. So That's Allah, what Allah does. 
Allah, you know, we, we can point out all the time, hey, you've got a God who brags about being the best of deceivers. No, it's best of planners. It's like the word means deception, the best of those who do deception. Ah, but that's not what it means. But then they, they clearly have absorbed the idea that Allah gets a lot of what he does done through deceiving everyone. Interesting. They do in Arabs. And Allah says, because Iman hasn't entered your heart. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? It says, the Bedouins say, we have believed. Say, you have not yet believed, but rather say, we have submitted. For, for faith has not entered your heart. If you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not deprive you from your deeds of anything. So, which is very clear, meaning faith Ooh. hasn't come into your heart yet. So every Muslim... This is all weird. This is, I mean, this is all, this is all in response to Andrew Tate having some of the dumbest reasons that anyone's ever... I mean, to be fair, they're not quite as bad as Sneakos, but they're still really, really bad. <laughs> And in response to that, he's saying, yeah, but that's no problem because Allah tricked me into, <laughs> Allah duped me into converting and I'm going to stay. So Andrew Tate, even though you've been duped into converting based on complete nonsense, uh, you'll definitely want to stay. And the same would go for a sneako. It looks like he's actually, you know what it is? It looks like he's preparing the ground for this wave of Muslim converts, this wave of Muslims who converted over the past 20 years on these completely ridiculous reasons that are all now being destroyed. It looks like he's trying to like prepare the ground for all these guys going, wait a minute, everything you told us, all this perfect preservation stuff, the scientific miracles, the mathematical marvels, all this stuff is being completely destroyed. Why am I a Muslim? It looks like he's like preparing for that by, oh, yes, of course, we, we all come to Islam for these stupid reasons that are not true. But then we stay in Islam for the, the, uh, uh, the eternity of deflowering virgins. <laughs> Does it seem like that? Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? Um, what this makes me th it makes me think that Andrew Tate might be the earthly uh, or the uh, overworldly manifestation of Allah, uh, because um, Allah is also Allah does that whole thing. He calls himself God. He calls himself the, the Creator, and then he does all of these weird things, and he promises like virgins for all the guys who do good stuff. And he's like, hey, if you work hard, you will get all the all the girls. You know, and you will you will bang all of them. And uh, and he also deceives people and calls himself the greatest of deceivers. You know, lures people into Islam. And that, that reminds me of Andrew Tate, who also uh, you know promises people all kinds of uh, women that they can use just for their own pleasure, and uh, uh, he calls himself God, and he also has a has a great history of luring people, luring people into his business, into his sphere by lying to them and deceiving them. And similarly, Ali Dawah just admits that Allah deceived him into Islam. So there is a there is a pattern here, there is a theme here, and I feel like it is very complex and very interesting. Yeah, and Ali Ali could say that right. It's like, uh, Yo, Andrew Tate, so. Yeah, you came in for some lies and deception and you convert it to Islam, but no problem because that's how your cam girls was was becoming <laughs> cam girls, according to you. It had to be the deception. But then once they got in there, then they was like, oh, with it. Right. So that's just like Islam. Yeah. It's just like a big webcam business, something like that. <laughs> uh, hey, check this out. Said, uh, uh, someone here says, Sneeko just did a podcast with a Muslim you both debated. Um, I guess he's talking about. Sheikh Uthman, you didn't debate Sheikh Uthman, did you? I didn't debate him. Yeah. He called me out. I said, if you want to have a debate, let's have a moderated debate. And he said, I'm not a debater. Come to park. So, okay, yeah. so, and he brought you guys up saying you run from him. All right, let me go ahead and say here, you can, uh, 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 we have not discussed this ahead of time because this comment just came out, but let's see if AP agrees. AP, do we invite, do we hereby invite for the 487 millionth time, these guys who say we're scared of them onto our live stream, uh, do we hereby invite Sneeko and Sheikh Uthman to join us on either one of our channels or both live to have a discussion about Islam? Yes. Oh, we, we did it, but we're invite. running. But we're he won't do it. He won't do it. Sneeko won't do it. But they'll both say that we're running from them. Watch. This is just how it goes. This is so ridiculous. He... Uh... I mean, you went to him, right? But in my case, even he called me out initially, made a video in which he called me out for no reason. Like he's propagating some billboard or something and he's calling me out uh, while he's uh, talking about how great their dawah is. Uh, I, I don't know why. Um, I make a response and say, hey, you know, if you want to, if you want to have a, have a discussion or a debate, just, you know, let's, let's, let's have an organized uh, debate. Um, later he and mentioned he me ag again. He calls me out again in worse ways. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, 
let's have a debate. And I get in touch with one of his guys who's actually directly in contact with him. I say, hey, tell Sheikh Uthman if he so badly wants to talk to me, if he wants to bury me or destroy me, what is, which is what he has said in his videos, I'm happy to have a moderated debate. And then he says to that guy, I'm not a debater, but he, is, he should come to my park. And then he goes again and is like, he, these people he, are running he from only, me. He only, likes, he only likes talking in that one spot where he's surrounded by a bunch of yes men who are just nodding in agreement the entire time and so on. Um, but then why is he saying that, that, that I'm running from him when I am the one who is telling him, let's have a debate. We're here. He's We're here. Me, and he's, go, he's leaving. We're here. Like, ha this guy is just... Has he has he even had an actual like formal debate? I don't know. Never. No. Never. He doesn't want to do it. But and this is the, this is the weird thing. We can invite them fifty seven thousand times. They'll all say we're the ones running, even though we're <laughs> we're saying right here, let's go. We're fine with it. <laughs> I don't know what, what can you do? It, it, it's just the, it's just the sad fact that their followers will just listen to them and not listen to us. And so if they if they're if they say. Oh, they're all running from us. All the followers go, ha ha, they're running from them, even though it just has nothing to do with reality. But notice how this all ties together. It's Allah deceiving people, using these these arguments to deceive people. And then Ali Dawa thinking it's OK to use arguments to deceive people. And then Sheikh Uthman using to I mean, this is the guy who like sprayed ketchup on his own shirt and then said that, uh, you know, because of our influence, he's, he's being attacked. Uh, so that's why people call him Sheikh Ibn Smollett. It's like they're all using deception as their go to method. And so even here, oh, they're all running for it's pure deception and their followers love it. It's also funny that. Um... He is having a he is having a stream with Sneeko, and for some reason, when they are talking about Islam, he has to, of course, again, once again, bring up you and me out of nowhere. That that's how he does his dawa. You know? Strange <laughs> to be spending so much time talking about people, and then calling them scared when they're literally right there inviting you to join them and expose them. He can join right now. <laughs> can, can, I, can, can Ali Dawa join us right now to explain? Yes. And, I mean, yes. I, I don't know what we're going to debate because it seems like we're all on the same page with the scientific argument being completely debunked and absolute nonsense in his words. Right, let's go ahead and let him finish this clip here. I don't think there's anything important here, but... Is every mu'min is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a mu'min. A true, true, true believer in that sense. This comes with time, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this video, because we know very clearly our brother Andrew Tate is a Muslim. Is he a mu'min yet? No, not just yet. He'll be working not towards yet. that. So this clearly shows us the following. But Allah also mentions in, the, in, in Surah Ahzab, in the Quran, إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَالْقَانِتِينَ وَالْقَانِتَاتِ Powerful. And the verse goes on, and that they will have a great reward. Powerful. So, we need to understand we give him the benefit of doubt. He's still learning. So that was all in response to Andrew Tate having not knowing anything about Islam and having completely stupid reasons for converting to Islam. Uh, Ali Dawa said a bunch of words, and that's always supposed to be a decisive refutation of any objection. But uh, fortunately for us, he tossed in there that the scientific argument has been debunked and that it's absolute nonsense. Now, now, um, there were two possibilities. We talked about this recently. There were two possibilities because Ali Dawa's followers complained, especially when we started sh sharing the clip and talking about it, pointing out that all of this Dawa from Ahmed Didat and Zakir Knight seemed like their biggest main argument was scientific miracles. And now Muslim Da'is themselves are acknowledging that it's been completely debunked. And so this is going to raise the objection. Wait a minute. I converted because of that. I converted because of those because of those reasons. And now you're saying it was all nonsense, absolute nonsense, Ali Dawa. And so the question is, once he, he gets the blowback from his fans, people, oh, you're destroying my faith, just like Sheikh Uthman did when he acknowledged that there are holes in the narrative. Uh, what is he going to do? Is he going to is he going to uh, backtrack and say, oh, what I really mean? is that oh, this particular version of the argument was refuted, but not the whole argument, right? Was he going to do that? Or is he going to stand his ground like a man? Well, happy to say Ali Dawa stood his ground like a man. He didn't give in to the peer pressure. He didn't back down from the uh, constant complaints of all the Muslims whose faith in Islam was being completely destroyed by his Dawa. He stood his ground. He doubled down. He affirmed, yes, it has been debunked.
So we're actually going to go through this video. Hey, uh, you, what are you grinning at here? What are you, you got something to say? Well, uh, while we're doing this, I'm writing a message to uh, to Sheikh Uthman. So, oh, sending him a message. No, I'm just I'm just putting it on my YouTube uh, community tab like once more, telling him to. I can't. Uh, I can't come and discuss with me. I can't imagine him actually going on anything where there's going to be open discussion because I mean the first thing anyone's going to do is hey t you know explain this whole uh this whole stabbing where you got stabbed in this hate crime and you said that you did the police reports and uh, they had the knife and they arrested the guy and he went to court and was convicted and put in jail and yet the entire police department and the prosecutors there's no record of this happening anywhere. Can you please explain how all of this happened without anyone in the world except you being aware of it? Um, he knows it's something like that's going to happen, so he has to. Uh, he's going to have to avoid it. Have you seen? Really? There, there have been clips where someone called him out in a mosque, in a mosque Q and A, and asked him about that. Really? And he starts calling the other guy liar. You see, this a liar. He came in here to just to try and do this. He pretends he's sincere when he's not. Look at this liar. Look at this liar. And they they remove the guy from the mosque. I think. Um, <laughs> For, for exposing him, but this is what you this is what you have this is what you have to do for attention in Dala. He's just a giant child at this point. I don't I don't even know what to say. I mean, if if I was if I was running around constantly uh, mentioning some 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 guy's name and saying, oh he he he's running from me, he's scared of me, I would feel pretty childish. You know? <laughs> this this guy is walking around, this imam, this sheikh with his address and his beard, and acts like a act like a little baby. It's just so so funny to me. I don't what is this? Why you go live when it's two thirty in Germany? Uh, we well, didn't sorry, go live. We didn't go live when it's two thirty in Germany uh, because that doesn't even match up that we went live on the hour. Uh, but besides, we did it because we don't like Germany. We specifically choose this time because we do not like Germany at all. Period. Yeah. AP used to live there. He said it is indeed a garbage country. I only liked it at one point in history, but after that, I'm just, I'm, I no longer like, <laughs> like it, but yeah. All right. So should we check out Ali Dawa's new video? Yeah, let's do it. So Ali Dawa is going to double down, ladies and gentlemen. But what's, what's interesting here is he, he, he actually knows enough that he agrees once again, that the scientific argument has been debunked. He says it very clearly. But then the, the obvious question that's going to arise is, wait a minute, if our faith in Islam was based on this and it turns out to be completely debunked, what are we supposed to base our confidence in now? Well, how, how are we going to do dawah now if all our arguments for perfect preservation and scientific mirrors, if all our arguments have been destroyed, what are we going to do now? And Ali Dawa does give his new case for Islam and my goodness, I am rooting for him. Okay. Everyone. Listen Something. to Ali Dawa. Use this 100% as your argument for Islam. You won't regret it after you leave Islam. Um, that sounds powerful. That sounds powerful. All right. So I cut off his little commercial at the beginning, but the actual content will have. Uh, let's check this out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Okay, so guys, this is a quick video, inshallah. I didn't want to do a dedicated video to this. I was here with the brothers uh, filming for the podcast. And I thought, why I'm sat here, I'll quickly. Uh, touch up on this quickly because it's not really that important. So in the Andrew Tate video, it's not that important. <laughs> <laughs> this is like global dawa changing stuff here. <laughs> there are a bunch of most. There are lots of Muslims in the comment section of that video who are shocked and surprised and go like, "Brother Ali, what what are you what 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 does this mean? What are you talking about? Why are you saying this has been debunked and it's nonsense? Can you please clarify?" And He's he's attacking the narrative of so many Muslims who come to me and to you and uh, propose that as an argument for Islam, and and now he he acts like this is no big deal. <laughs> yeah, I ha I have to say, you know, him not realizing what a big deal this is. This is massive, and basically the the general rule. I don't have any you know any actual clear mathematics. It's just the way it seems. It seems that a popular Muslim scholar or da'i admitting something is roughly equivalent of 10 years of us making the exact same point. 
In other yeah. words, Muslims said perfect preservation right down to the letter year after year after year. We showed them that the Quran has not been preserved that way, according to their own sources, according to the manuscript tradition, according to Qurans around the world. Even when Hatun is going and putting the Quran in their faces, there's still I mean, different versions of the Quran in their faces. They're still clinging to it. They're still thinking that their scholars have some explanation for how this is all just one Quran. They think that they assume it. They, they assume we're liars and their scholars are telling the truth. And it's not until like Sheikh Yasser Qadi will come along and say, OK, the standard narrative has holes in it. We've got some problems, but we cannot uh, under any circumstances discuss this in front of Muslims because we will destroy their faith. So he doesn't want to give an explanation. But him acknowledging that suddenly, suddenly they all they all catch on. They flip out at first, but then they all catch on. And it's actually. It's it's much rarer to see the argument from perfect preservation. Now, you'll occasionally see it from a Muslim, but not anywhere near what it was just five years ago before the uh, holes in the narrative interview. So somehow their guys admitting something like seals the deal for Muslims and makes them take it seriously when before that they're all they're, they're telling us we're liars. So if Zakir Naik says, ah, look at this miracle. Look at this miracle in the Quran. How could, look, how could Muhammad know this, right? When he says something like that, and we say, that's a lie. Read the passage. That's a lie. You don't know what science, no, that's a, that, that does not line up with embryology. That does not line up with cosmology. None of this lines up. So, now, you're liars. You're liars. You're jealous because the powerful miracles, right? And they'll say that for years. And then Ali Dao will just come out. Yeah, they're right. It's all been debunked. And suddenly, it's okay, garbage. it's been debunked. Let's go to our, let's go to our new, our new argument. Interesting stuff. You know what's even uh, what's very weird to me about this whole thing? His uh, husband, Mohammed Hijab, he um, he had a he had a discussion with me where he specifically told me several times that he thinks that uh, certain things about the Quran are scientific miracles. You know, <laughs> he, he mentioned things about the Quran. He was like, and I, I think I mean, this this is a miracle or this could could be seen as a miracle. This is what that guy used in a, in a in a stream that currently probably has like a total of nearly a million views <laughs> and and here he is coming out and acting like uh after applauding that after applauding Mohammed Hijab for that coming out here and it's like a yeah, scientific miracles in Quran you know it's nonsense it's the bin debunked wow okay when did that happen <laughs> loving this loving this and it's it's just a people always focus on what's happening right now and not like the trajectory of where things are going you always have to look. I mean, if the, the argument from perfect preservation just collapsed and now the scientific miracles has just collapsed, like what's what's next? Like what's ha what's next in two years or three years? What other big thing is going to collapse? But it seems like it's all coming. And wow, it is fun to watch. Uh, we have here, um, whose bookshelf do you like more? Mike Winger or Ali Dawa's? I got to speak the truth. I, I, Ali Dawa's got a cooler bookshelf. Mike Winger really? had that had that uh, garbage IKEA stuff. Uh, I mean, none of those cooler mo cooler than mine. I got mine are way cooler. Um, but Ali Dawa needs some sort of splash of color. Like everything is. What's up with all the earth tones today, Ali Dawa? It's all earth tones. Got something a little brighter here. But maybe it's your mood. Your mood is earth tones. Now that you're understanding that you've buried this argument. Did you see how I tied earth tones to burying oh, something? Wow! Oh, goodness, that's wow. powerful. That that's was powerful. Nobody can imitate that. We're getting better. Yeah, yeah. Show me where Allah can do that. I just did it off the top of my head. <laughs> Powerful. All right. Let's get some more. Ali G. Dawa. I did. I mentioned that the scientific miracles in the Quran got debunked, and for some odd reason, funnily enough, like as if they thought that it was a slip of the tongue. I'll repeat it again, very carefully. The scientific miracles argument uh -huh. in the Quran uh -huh. got debunked. Uh -huh. Yeah, the was on point. So, oh, so he's clarifying. Isn't that funny? Because a lot of people, a lot of people in the comments were saying, Ali, could you clarify what you're saying? Could you clarify? It's the same stupid thing they did with Sheikh Yasser Qadi when they when they're leaking his messages. And he's really sounding like he doesn't think the standard explanations for Quran variants do a good job. And oh, could you clarify that for us? That was that's what Muhammad Hijab was doing. Just come on here and you'll clarify it, And then everyone will see you're not denying the perfect preservation of the Quran. And uh, well, they keep asking for clarification. Guys, take this as a lesson. When someone says that one of your favorite arguments is wrong, stay quiet and move on and pretend it didn't happen. Because if you ask for clarification, be careful what you wish for. You're going to get it. 
By the way, uh, people are saying that my bookshelf is apparently uh, their favorite. Your, yours is cooler because it's invisible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's cool. That's way cooler. When I said this, a lot of um, Islamophobes were celebrating as if I was at all. Hey, I wonder who he's talking about here. Let me back up. <laughs> now, by the way, isn't this hilarious? It's like... I don't even know what these Islamophobes want to want to mention this just because we've been lying for decades about what's in the Quran and I finally admit that this be a lie. Yeah, why does they care? Why do we care that you finally admitted that something you've been something you've been saying for years is a lie? Because we've been trying to get people to understand that they're dealing with liars who will make things up to defend their religion and you proved our point perfectly. That's why we're using it, Ali. We have debates about this with Muslims. Yeah, we have debates about these about this whole topic with Muslims. And here, the most popular Muslim uh, YouTuber, for some weird reason, comes out and and says that is all nonsense. How? Of course, this is going to be very interesting, surprising, oh, shocking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please, Ali. Please, please continue what you're doing. Man got debunked. Yeah, I hope my tajweed was on point. So when I said this, a lot of um, Islamophobes were celebrating as if I was like, oh my gosh, like, this video is going to be me apologizing. And, Guilty. No, listen, it got debunked. Now, let's give some context for some Muslims so they can understand. For Who example, debunked? and I'll tell you where this comes from. And you know why many people in the Duat, many Duat, YouTubers, my colleagues, that, like brothers that I work with, didn't do a video. Why did you say that? Because they know it as well. In what? Did you catch that? Did you yeah. catch what he just said? He yeah, said, why yeah. didn't other people make a video on this? They know it's true too. Yeah, they agree they know with it. me. They agree. So what, what's he saying? He's saying the Dawa guys know that this argument has been debunked, that it is absolute nonsense, that it's garbage. And yet, guess what? Same guys, they know that the Quran is, hasn't been perfectly preserved. They know that there are different Qurans in different parts of the world. They know about all the passages in the Quran that were that came up missing, were lost because the only people who had them memorized died in battle, that were eaten by a sheep. They know about this. Why do they keep telling people things that are false? It's just what you do in Dawah, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just, I'm, I, I Dawah. If everybody knows this, if all of your fellow Muslim apologists are aware that the scientific miracles narrative is nonsense and it has been debunked, then I'm just I just want to ask you one question. Why did Muhammad Hijab bring that as an argument to me? And again, Hijab has to know. I mean, Hamza Tsortsis was the one who gave the marching order saying, hey, guys, we need to stop using this argument. And that's uh, I mean, Hijab is one of his right-hand men, and Ali Da was Hijab's right-hand man. So these guys all knew it, and yet they would still not hesitate. And I here's the thing. I guarantee, I guarantee that if even Ali Dawa was not on camera, but he's talking to some non-Muslim on a train somewhere, and that person says, oh, you know, I don't really believe in Islam because I only believe in science. I guarantee you he's going to, oh, the, the, the Quran has got scientific miracles in it, yeah? And <laughs> would not care, would not care. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sheikh Boyardi, said, that's a good name. Uh, is, the, is, is this the third show I've seen David on today? Second for AP? No, this is, uh, this is my second of the day, unless he watched, uh, unless he's in a different time zone and he watched uh, our live stream from last night on the yeah, same day. Probably. Um, all right, let's get more from, gosh, gosh, I'm loving Ali Dawa and all this stuff he's doing right now. You know, AP, this is weird yes. to say, this is weird to say, but if I were gay, <laughs> if I were gay, you're hearing okay. this from me. I'm, you're hearing this from yeah. me. Ali Dawa, <laughs> Ali Dawa is being honest here. I can be honest too. If I were gay and blind. <laughs> And deaf, so that deaf. I did not have to, if I were deaf and I could not hear that voice, and all I were attracted to were people who were doing monumental work in destroying Islam at the very foundations, I would be absolutely in love with this man. <laughs> I really didn't expect he would actually go there. But... I have to. Hey, hey, he's, he's being honest. I got to be honest, man. Uh, Andrew That's Martin good. says, uh, David, what I have a question. Will you debate Hamza Den? I don't know who Hamza Den is, but yes. 
if he's if he's popular <laughs> and wants to Dick, debate. I think they're referring to Hamza's Den. Oh, the uh, show Hamza's Den. Yeah, I've seen that. In yeah, fact, I think that's where I think that's where Sheikh Uthman was saying was asked about uh was asked about his tweet saying that he does believe that unbelievers need to be fought and their wives taken as captives and yeah. enslaved and stuff. And he said, on Hamza's den, I believe. Oh, oh, yes, when I said that, what I really mean is blah, blah, blah. And then later on, of course, uh, no, I never said that. What are you talking about? Someone else did that. Interesting stuff. But if lying is your method, <laughs> why stop here? All right. I think everybody knows uh, that that section where David Wood just made a made an honest declaration needs to be clipped. Yeah. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Yeah. <laughs> right. Here we go. Brothers and sisters, I was having a debate with a guy called Phil. Yes, this guy is a scientist or whatever he is, for that matter. I was debating with him, and I can remember this very clearly a couple of years ago, and. I took an ayah in the Quran, which I am not qualified to do, which is give it, it's like doing tafsir. So there was an ayah in the Quran which says that there are seven heavens. So me, I was claiming, because of this whole scientific narrative, that this is talking about the ozone layer. Number one, it is haram for me to do that. Why? Because how can I give an understanding to the Quran, the ayah, AP, with no qualification? AP, you're laughing. Is it? Are you laughing about him saying the different layers of the ozone layer? <laughs> yes. I don't know if that you're laughing is, at that, or I don't know if you're well, laughing at that, or uh, or something in the chat, or something like that. But no, I, I first laughed because he brought up that he brought he brought up uh, he himself making a scientific miracle claim, which already makes me uh, slightly laugh because that's that's just ridiculous. Uh, then it makes me laugh that he is going to the seven heavens science argument because that is a beyond ridiculous argument yeah. and 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 Alidawa, considering that he has no idea about the world around us or maybe probably not even about the shape of the earth uh would would completely butcher that and then blame the whole scientific miracles narrative uh for that blunder but then he also goes and talks about seven ozone layers and yeah so <laughs> seven different ozone layers i we still can't even figure out what he's talking about unless he i i assume he's talking about different layers of the atmosphere and not different ozone layers so i assume he's talking about like like you have layer you have the earth's atmosphere and they'll divide it up into uh troposphere and stratosphere and so on um but for, for anyone who's not familiar with the problem, you have in the Quran that there are seven heavens and the same number of earths. There are seven heavens and seven earths. And Muhammad in the Hadith actually explains, you know, it's like a it's like a journey to get to each uh, each layer of the uh, of the heavens and also the earths. Uh, I think he said it's a 500 year journey through through yeah. each one of them or something like that. But notice this is. Take your pick. Take your pick. 500 years of what? Walking, 500 years of riding a camel, 500 years of driving a car, 500 years in a spaceship, 500 years at the speed of light. However you want to define that, no matter what, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to make any sense. Um, and according to Ibn Abbas, it's seven Earths. They're all flat, uh, stacked up like pancakes, except they've got a, a 500 year journey in between each one of them. The point is, if you read what the Quran says, and especially if you read the what the commentaries and so on, you cannot make sense of this at all. Seven, seven earths stacked up on top of each other, and then seven uh, heavens that are basically the same distance between each of the earths and so on. So Muslims have to explain this. And uh, this Ali's making a valid point here from an Islamic perspective. You can't just randomly say that it means this other thing. So Muslims will say, ah, the seven heavens refers to the seven layers of the atmosphere. Well, you, you, that might work if you're talking to someone who has absolutely no clue what he's talking about. The first thing I would respond if you bring that up is, according to the Quran, the stars are in the lowest heaven. Yep, okay, so yep. the, the stars would be in the troposphere, which would be right in our face, if, yep. that's, if that's what it means. So it doesn't... It doesn't work. And they'll try to explain the seven earths as like layers of the earth's uh, crust and so on. It's like you can't you, you can't do that. It doesn't it doesn't fit. Those only work if you have no clue what anyone's talking about and you just go with the first explanation that someone offers you. Uh, but I've seen tons of variations of them trying to explain it. None of the explanations work. And I think that's what he's getting at. You cannot make sense of this from a scientific perspective. And yet there I was saying that it refers to uh, 
uh, ozone layers and so on. So it is just weird. It just shows that he has no understanding when he when he debates people that he has no understanding of uh, of what the Quran is talking about. Um, plus, and or he has no understanding of the scientific world around us, not even remotely. I mean, the Quran's narrative is uh, Allah placed the stars into the the nearest heaven, the heaven of the earth, the lowest heaven, and uh, he created seven heavens and also placed uh, the the lights, meaning the the the, the sun and the the moon, among them, which would mean <laughs> if seven if seven heavens refers to the seven layers, then that would mean the sun and the the moon would have to be all part of this earth somewhere, and the stars would have to be on our level, so we could just you know kick them around or something like that, and uh, it it doesn't make sense at all what what is interesting is that i went into this when i made a made my long video about the scientific mistakes of the quran um this whole idea of seven heavens is an idea that that existed in in uh in ancient mesopotamia in different uh myth mythologies different beliefs and is just one of the ideas that seem to have you know made it made it made their made their way into uh, the the pre-Muslim environment and into Islam, and so uh, Ali had to find out the hard way. But notice that would be what, what Ali's saying right here. I mean, we can sit here and laugh at it and say that's so stupid that you're trying to apply this Quran verse to seven, you know, seven ozone layers and things like that. It's like beyond <laughs> ridiculous. But really, that's your average your average Dawa followers understanding of this. They have no idea about anything science. They just assume, ah, the Quran is saying something brilliant and amazing right there. And Ali's finally just really saying, no, it doesn't guys. No, no, it doesn't. Stop assuming that this stuff actually makes sense because it does not. So rooting for you, Ali, keep it up, man. Keep up this bang up job you're doing. Let's see some more. And who of you have ever said that this is the ozone layer? Then I was having a debate with this atheist guy and trying to tell him that there's seven ozone layers. And he was saying to me, no, my friend, there are six ozone layers. And I was saying seven. He was saying six, seven, six, seven, six. And we said, let's go to the NASA page. So we went to the NASA page. Uh, and in the NASA page... Anyone who says... <laughs> guys, <laughs> I don't care which one of you was saying is seven ozone layers and which one's saying is six ozone layers. You both need to actually <laughs> do a little bit of studying before your dumb conversation. That's what? He said the argument was apparently from the recent findings, whatever it may be, this probably changed. Uh, and this is my whole point of the video, yeah? Science changes. He said that there is five ozone layers. So uh, I looked uh, at him. <laughs> <laughs> how, does no one, how does no one correct him on this and just say, Ali, please, please record, please re-record this video and say no, layers of the Earth's atmosphere. Say layers of the Earth's atmosphere. When you're talking about is it seven or six or five ozone layers? You really sound dumber than you need to sound right now. And you wouldn't sound this dumb if you were just saying layers of the, the Earth's atmosphere. I mean, when I make, when I make videos, uh, when I record a video, um, and I have the idea that I might have gotten, that I want to, I want to make sure that I have um, presented everything the correct way, even if it's some basic stuff that I've heard like a thousand times times in my life, I sit down and quickly verify the information that I've presented, and then and then do, sometimes some things might get through that are you know that could be mistakes. Yeah. But I try to fact check as much as possible and put it out there. But <laughs> on something like this, this guy just says keeps talking about ozone layers like it's something he never heard of before and then just puts it out there without any correction and it's just it's, it's kind of ridiculous and, and you and have a responsibility way, for knowledge for information yeah. yeah and this is this is what we were talking about recently when i said that um that a manipulator conditions his followers but the followers are simultaneously conditioning the manipulator as to what he can get away with. Right. Um, so anyway, so you take someone like Andrew Tate and he's conditioning his followers to mindlessly agree with him on everything he says. But when they actually do that, they just go along with anything he says, even if he contradicted himself the day before. 
that is a message from your followers to you that you can just say anything you anything you want, no matter how ridiculous, no how no matter how obviously false it is, and they'll just go along with what you say. Well, any one of the Dawa guys ends up being surrounded by yes men who just shower him with praise as if he's a hero in every situation. Anything he says, no matter how obviously wrong it is, they will cheer for him. That has an effect on people over time. If the if your own community does not call you out for the things you say, then you it's it gets built into you. You get hardwired to think, I don't need to be careful at all because it doesn't matter. I can be right, I can be wrong. If your goal is getting praised and showered with praise because you're a narcissist, well, they're going to shower you with praise if you say something that's true. They're going to shower you with praise if you say something is false. Why do you have to care? You can just keep blurting stuff out. You just, you're, they shower you with praise when you say something, when you blurt it out, especially if you're thumping your chest. So what do you need to do? Do you need to be careful? No, you just need to thump your chest and say, this is the way it is. That's what they cheer for. This is what all their dais are like right now. And they're wondering, they're wondering why it's falling apart. My goodness, man. All right. <laughs> Back to our good friend, Ali Dawa. At me and I was thinking, I'm seeing seven, you're seeing six, NASA is seeing five. That is where the NASA did not from. say five you know what? ozone layers because we are making claims about the Quran and specific verses. And because we was, you know, not myself, I would say, but a lot of people were very insecure because of this scientific, you know, not um, you, not you, discoveries though. or whatever it may be. And we was trying to fit the scientific narrative into the Quran, which was a big mistake because it's as if as good as we were making science the um the guideline the standard the for criteria the Quran to be accepted this is nonsense yeah yeah we was we trying to fit Quran, <laughs> not science to hell with science science changes to <laughs> <laughs> to hell with science <laughs> guys so, that's the clip you want for twitter to, to hell, hell with, with science. science yeah <laughs> Ali to Dawa, hell with science scientific champion of the world today they talk about the big bang now there's new uh, studies or whatever, new findings that there was no Big Bang. So my point is what? You cannot come and say this were, this verse here is a scientific miracle, it's a scientific fact. Why? Not because the Quran is wrong, because science changes number one. Number two, who told you that verse in the Quran is talking about what you're ascribing to it? The, and that is that is the, even you know being nice here, that is the valid point that he's making. Whenever you say, like in his example, uh, seven, um, the seven heavens, when you say that's referring to, let's even correct him, layers of the earth's atmosphere, where are you getting that from in the text? It do, that is not coming from the text. It does not make sense in light of the text. It doesn't make sense in the light of Hadith. It doesn't make sense in light of the commentary. And yet you're saying it anyway. You've just given the Quran a meaning which the Quran cannot possibly mean. And mm -hmm. so Ali's basically saying that that's what we're doing when we use these scientific miracles. We're taking something from the Quran and turning it into something that was never intended based on something we see in science. Oh, we see, oh, there's a new finding in science. Oh, let's go read this into the Quran and we'll twist verses into making these claims. And he's realizing how, how da dangerous and bad that is. But guess what? That's been the standard method of Dawah for at least 30 or 40 years. I mean, this is this is the bread and butter of Ahmed Didad and Zakir Naik and so on. And Ali Dawah is saying that these guys are being really, really, really stupid in what they're doing. And I have to agree. Of everything else Ali Dawah has ever said, I have to agree with them on this one. I mean, I have been thinking about the same thing for quite a while now. When um, when Muslims make this claim that uh, certain Quran verses refer to these uh, these facts which we didn't know but now know, they are basically trying to trying to uh, infer what Allah was actually trying to say, and are making are making science here the arbiter. And yeah, I mean, he he is right on that point, as you said. He he is really trying to read his own understanding into these verses when a Muslim tries to argue from a scientific miracle. For example, the whole uh, mountains have have uh, have roots 
thing that they like to bring up. The Quran describes mountains as as pegs that Allah placed into the earth, and they look like they might have you know, like roots. And when you look at mountains, they actually have these roots, and therefore the Quran, uh, <laughs> the Quran actually presents a miracle here, which is just completely false on so many levels because mountains don't all have roots. When people talk about mountains having roots, they are not talking about actual roots. They're talking about these buoyant um, roots, which are only which are not real roots, which are just described that way. Plus, the Quran never says anything about roots. It says that Allah plants the mountains into the earth as pegs, which has nothing to do with what they're claiming. And that is just problematic on so many levels because they are reading something completely wrong into the text and thereby corrupting uh, Allah's words in order to uh, convert people to Islam or to reaffirm their own faith, which is just which should be considered ridiculous from an Islamic aspect too. So there he is actually right. But it's just funny to me that his method of getting to that or the way he got to that was using one of the worst possible scientific miracle arguments there are, using it in such a wrong way as well. And then thinking, look, it doesn't make sense. Therefore, all the scientific miracles narrative it's all nonsense, absolute garbage, completely wrong. It's all been debunked. <laughs> yeah, it is. A... My goodness, <laughs> it's wild. Hey, we've got we've we've got God logic. He says he's in the green room. Uh, green hey, is there something room? is there something you need to push? It's saying no one's ever come up like this before. It's always come up. Hey, hang on, hang on. Oh, there we go. Yo. Hey, hey, how's it going? We're going through What's a. Going on, guys? We're going through a <laughs> Ali Dawa's video. Ali Dawa acknowledging that the uh, scientific miracles argument has been debunked. You've already seen this, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you you were just uh, apparently you said that Sheikh Uthman is out there with Sneeko. Is that right? Sheikh, Sheikh Uthman. I was literally on my way to come here to do the stream, and a little Muslim kid named Farhan ran up to me and said, hey, Sheikh Uthman and Sneeko are here. I said, no, they're not. Stop lying to me. He said, no, for real, they're streaming right now. He pulled out his phone and showed that they're streaming and they were praying over there in the corner. And it was like, can you go and talk to them? Can you go ask them questions? I said, yeah, I will. So uh, I, I was literally about to go, go home to do the stream, but I'm like, I can't pass this up. They, they're here. I ain't seen Uthman in over a year. So let me go talk to my best pal, man. And then Sneeko was here. So yeah, they were both there. They had a whole crowd, um, you know, and, and we got into it. We had a discussion. So you could, yeah, go ahead. Oh, did you convert to Islam? Because obviously with the combined powers of Sneeko and Sheikh Uthman, you must have been overwhelmed by the, uh, by the powerful evidence, especially if he had a book with a footnote in it that he could show you. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, you know, uh, there was so much, I felt so much of Jabril there um, that it was almost, it was almost <laughs> overwhelming. Um, I just felt the power. I felt, I, I don't know, something was like kind of almost strangling me and I just heard recite or just recite. <laughs> you know, I started to hear this little stuff. And so, uh, but, but, you know, glory to God, you know what I'm saying? You know, we got the real Holy Spirit. So uh, I did not succumb to the power of Dawah. I did not. Wow. Wow, that's wild. Um, yeah, Maybe you can always hear that. Yeah. We just said it because uh, earlier someone said that they were that uh, Uthman and Sneeko were saying we're scared and we're running from them, even though we keep inviting, we keep saying they're welcome to join us. So you've heard it here. You've heard it here, Avery. Mm -hmm. Sneeko and Sheikh Uthman, you are invited to join us and expose and humiliate us. Happy, happy to have you. Um, they're not doing nothing now. They 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 went to whatever spot they're they're at and they're just chilling. So they got the time actually right now. I'm pretty sure they know you guys are streaming. They could yeah. pop up right yeah, now. Yeah, contact us. What no? What, what? Yeah, I don't know what to do. I, I was just telling before you got on here. I was telling AP. I think I think that Sheikh Uthman is worried about going on anyone's live stream because people are instantly probably going to ask him to clarify his uh, <laughs> the, the the vicious hate crime against him. Right. Uh, Right. Where, where, where's that evidence, man? Yeah, the world hasn't forgotten about that, David. And we, we have not forgot. We still want answers. We still want answers to that, you know? That's true. Right. And he and he even said, he even, what's hilarious is, I mean, people only found out about him since, like in the last year or two. 
And he was asked, he was asked somewhere about, hey, where's the evidence? You keep saying this guy was locked up. He was I mean, he was arrested. He was he went to court. He was he was convicted. He was sentenced. And yeah. no one except you has any clue what you're talking about. Not the police, not the prosecutors. No one. Courts have no record of this. How how is this all happening? And his response was. Uh, oh, well, yes, everything's going to be clarified in the documentary that is being made about it. And it's like, wait, I've been going around saying I could spot you at 900 miles as a narcissist, right? Yeah. <laughs> the moment everyone starts finding out about you, it's, oh, look at this fake hate crime. And, oh, we're making a documentary about it. Yeah. My goodness, wow, man. man. This is These are awesome times. These are awesome yeah. times to be in. It's great, man. Look, David, just real quick, just last thing on this. I, I guess it would just go with the flow or whatever. You guys can ask whatever you want. But, dude. Sneakles, he Sneakles there, right? You know, he's he's there, and you know, Uthman is trying to use him like the, you know, exactly. the, 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 you know, trying to use him like that. You know how he does, and I'm doing the same thing. And so, but you could tell when when I ask him the very clear question or whatever, he's, you know, just just let him answer, just 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 let him answer type of thing. He won't engage really with what I'm saying. But dude, he's so lost. He has no idea what Islam is or what Uthman is talking about. You guys, you guys will see the clip. I, we were talking about the different variant because he brought up a variant in the in the Bible, and and they try to act like this was this proves falsehood. So I brought a variant in the Quran where it's either Muhammad who gets shocked or does Allah get shocked? Which one is it? He told me to bring an English translation that translates it differently. Wow. Bring me an English translation that well, shows the difference. Hatun's got what? Notice, wait, English translation? Yes. <laughs> That's Bring funny. an English translation that shows the difference. Then you'll have a valid point, Avery. Forget the Arabic. He threw the Arabic under the bus. Yeah, yeah. Who cares about the Arabic? What well, the only thing we care about is the English, which you can do very easily. I mean, you can find all sorts of variants in the English and the English translations of the Quran. What what do they say when you bring those up? They say, ah, but that's not in the Arabic. And apparently, right. if you bring up variants in the Arabic, ah, but that doesn't matter because the the English and what they know is like like. In general, most Qurans that you would find in English today are going to be versions of the Hafs. Yes. Uh, so that's yeah. what that's all he's assuming. It's harder to find uh, English translations of the other, even though they do exist. Hatun has a, a Hatun has a ton of the Arabic ones, but you can find translations of some of the other ones. But uh, notice, guys, that's what you're dealing with. Avery points out you had this isn't this is a there is a a a variant in Arabic here. So if you're going to say a, a variant in the Bible is a, is proof of corruption, say it about this. And and Sheikh Uthman's response was apparently, and we only have we only have Avery to go on here. So maybe the maybe the video is going to be completely different, and Sheikh Uthman will be completely vindicated. Right. But based on what I know about these two gentlemen, Avery and Sheikh Uthman, one is a compulsive liar. The other is not. So I'm guessing that Sheikh Uthman there was just lying and manipulating and that Avery is the one who's telling the truth about the exchange. But fortunately, there's video that we'll be able to uh, judge. Yeah, you guys will see the clip pretty soon, guys. It'll be up pretty soon. Yeah. I'm just slightly confused because uh, Sneaker was going around all the time saying um, the Bible has not been preserved. It's been uh, it's, it's not like the Quran. There's only one Quran, but the Bible has all these different versions, so many versions, numerous versions. And he was referring to all the different translations of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> so so when, when they are now referring to the translations of the of the Quran and asking you to bring a different translation, I, I that doesn't really that doesn't really make sense. We and by the, and, and there together. seems to be a if if we're we're always looking at the sources of their claims at, at their insane claims and it seems like Andrew Tate has been clinging to like the Muhammad hijab crowd whereas Sneeko is clinging to the Sheikh Uthman so the Sheikh Uthman crowd mm -hmm. and so if when you're wondering where did you get ideas like the the Council of Nicaea was a book of the Bible that was taken out. <laughs> He probably was hearing that from Sheikh Uthman, who doesn't know any better, right? <laughs> but here, here's, here's what's amazing. I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if Sheikh Uthman were to stand at his spot with, with the crowd that surrounds him, and he were to say, and one thing we know is that the Council of Nicaea was a book of the Bible that was taken out. Prove me wrong. And so all of his followers would mindlessly agree with him. They've been they will say, yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. 
I and love if I were, lie. Yeah, and if Avery were there saying that's idiotic nonsense, it would be, ha ha, he's lying because he's ashamed mm -hmm. that the book of the Council of Nicaea was removed. Yo, this is Dollar, David, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, AP, David, that's all that the showboating, the hype manness. Look, you guys will see it. All it is, is just a bunch of showboating and, and, and his hype men behind him, you know, praising everything he says and like it's a like it's a real point. Mm -hmm. um, or, or and while while there's other the three, like I told you, there's a lot of them. There was a bunch behind him and, and around me. And then there was like three others who were trying to like so Anthony was recording for me. They were trying to get in the way of my camera. They were trying to block it, throw their mm -hmm. hands in the way. So Anthony had to raise the tripod up and hold it the whole time, you know what I'm saying? And and record like that, but they were Shocker. still trying to, you know, nudge him a bit and get him off and stuff like that. So you'll, you'll see movement and stuff because they did not want us to get it on footage in this conversation, man. They were, they were frightened. They were frightened and they were in straight panic mode the whole time, bro. Whole and keep, time. keep in mind, Avery, you're a, you're actually pretty new to a lot of this, right? Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. you're a you're a new guy. It's not like it's not like you're you're Jay Smith and you've been doing this for thirty <laughs> years or something. You're a new guy. They should love to school you. Instead, they have to oh cover up his camera, cover up his camera. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. What is this? Look, what is this? I, I'm a new guy, man. Fastest growing shake uh, in in the world. <laughs> um, you know, and and it's tough. You know, it's tough. That they they hate. They're hating on my name. Uh, they're hating on my title as Shake Logic. Uh, and, and they hate that we have the fastest growing community called original Quran only Christianity, uh, where we affirm the original Quran, not the tampered Quran. Today, nice. The one that, the one that, that affirms that the Trinity, it affirms the Trinity and before, the before, Uthman, before Uthman corrupted it, mm -hmm. before <laughs> Uthman corrupted it and burned it, you know, it affirmed the deity of Christ and the crucifixion. It was corrupted. Muhammad, they made Muhammad a, 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 a prophet. But he used to be an, a disciple in his true story. So we yeah. believe in the original Quran. Yeah. yeah. And guys, if, if you don't understand what's going on here, <laughs> when we say, oh, we believe in the original Quran and we believe in the real Muhammad, the one, yeah. the, the Muhammad, the, the Christian evangelist yes. who brought his revelations in Arabic, which affirmed the death, resurrection and divine nature of Jesus and the triune God. And so on. And so uh, right. we say, yes, that's what Muhammad really was. And in fact, since we are respecting the real Muhammad, you Muslims need to realize that we respect Muhammad more than you. <laughs> exactly. our, our point is that sounds absolutely insane to every Muslim watching. What? How can you just say, oh, Muhammad was actually a Christian evangelist and his book was later corrupted by Uthman. How can you do that? And you think it sounds ridiculous? Great. That's what you sound like to us when, oh, Jesus was a Muslim and his followers are Muslims. It was later corrupted by the apostle. Paul. That's what you sound like to us when you just make stuff up <laughs> and you cling to it. Um, all right. So and I had a question here. Uh, Y'all seen uh, Javad Hashmi and Daniel Hakikachu's debate. I watched five. I watched five minutes or so of it. And then I realized it was like six and a half hours. They were already several hours deep into it. And I was like, mm -hmm. eh, it's a little on the long side. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen it. Um People only brought it up to me because uh, apparently they mentioned me for some reason during the debate. Oh, and yeah, I, they both just, called you a name. Yeah, and I just wanted to check what that is all about. But uh, then I went in there and listened for a little bit. But I thought that this is this is too much. I mean, a six and a half hours debate. What would you be doing to all these guys, man? I, I think you're a nice guy. What yeah, you, what, what you be doing? yeah, what are you doing in everyone's head, man? They're, people are having a complete a debate that has nothing to do with you, and they both start talking to you. That's weird. Right. I on. think I think they just maybe I'm just very friendly, and they like me. And yeah, that's true. That's why everyone like wants to, to be on. Me. Everyone wants to be on AP's side, and yeah. uh, the argument from scientific miracles looks like it was hit by Al Capone's Chicago typewriter. <laughs> the apostasy rate just keeps on rising. Yeah, and guys, uh, I've said it before. This is just getting started. If you go back 15 years, Muslims were still claiming no one has ever left Islam. It's it's a lie. Anyone who says he's left Islam must be a Jew. And they would say stuff like that. And you think this is insane. <laughs> but now they they talk about the avalanche of apostasy. They're acknowledging that all these people uh, are leaving Islam. And, and so basically the 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 rate of apostasy is accelerating rapidly. Um, and, yet Ali, and yet Ali Dawa in the video we're about to go back to watching. <laughs> 
is going to insist that we're all just terrified <laughs> because of Islam's explosive growth, thanks to you know people like Sneeko and Andrew Tate. So, uh, all right, Avi, sitting in our rage, sitting yeah. in our rage. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We 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 <laughs> we've seen it, but all right. We're, so we're going to watch a little more Ali Dawa here. Let's check it out. Simple as that. So that's why I repeat it one more time for my fans, those Islamophobes. The scientific argument, the scientific miracles of the Quran is debunked. Thank you. And we as Muslims, guess what? It doesn't bother us to the least. You know why? It doesn't bother us to the it least. It doesn't have bother you. you not have you ones. read your com have you read your <laughs> comments, AP? Man. Oh shoot. Oh my goodness. All right. Because Alhamdulillah, you know what's very interesting? People are flocking to Islam. Where? Isn't that crazy? Sneak all you Murtads, you ex-Muslims, all you hostile Christians, Islamophobes, not all of you, Zionists, some of you are Jews, some of you Hindus, all of you guys have got your tails between <laughs> your legs, walking away. <laughs> wait, we're, there are, we're, wait, there are Hindu Zionists? We're, we're sitting here, everyone's playing his video because we love it, and we're <laughs> cheering. And we're saying, I'm basically, I'm waking up every day now, like, go Ali, go Ali, go, go Ali, go Ali, go, go Ali, go Ali, go, 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 go. And he's like, oh, put you all running between with your tails between your legs because you're so you're so scared of all the elder peoples that's converting. And it's like, what? We 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 literally said this last time. We said this. Listen, Ali Dawa is becoming an even better Christian apologist than David Wood, than Sam Shimon. Then Anthony Rogers, then me, Avery Agala. He's becoming the, the face of Christian apologetics. And we will support you in any way. We're praying for you, Ali Dawa. We're supporting you. If you need financial help, we'll raise we'll do, some we'll, money. We'll do a collection. We'll do a we'll collection. Do a collection. <laughs> we will we'll fund. And we'll pass the plate around. <laughs> we will fund Ali Dawa to destroy these arguments for us. But yeah, uh, uh, Avery, uh, a little bit before you joined us, I was pointing out that like, when these guys admit something, it's like the equivalent of like 10 years of us trying to expose the lie. So we can spend 10 years showing Quran variants, but uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi just admitting it is like, it's, it's like equal. It's like equal to 10. It's like 10 years of work for us. is like equal to one live stream admitting yeah. That's good. Uh, That's good. For, for them. And so, yes, Ali Dawa has just... It, what we've what's taken us two decades to do he's doing it for us right right now right. and it is beautiful and he thinks that we're all upset and we're crying over it <laughs> <That's> <laughs> hilarious <laughs> well, clearly crying and you know what's yeah no, yeah ahead, we're ahead. moaning and wailing that i mean but we may be laughing on the outside but on the inside we're weeping everyone we're, we're really i'm, I'm terrified i'm terrified right now uh, yeah said, matter of fact <laughs> let me just let it out oh no <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's okay. oh, no. They admitted that the that the <laughs> that the perfect preservation was a lie, and that the mathematical miracles was a lie. Now he's saying that <laughs> he's saying that the scientific miracles. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? What's wrong with these guys, man? These guys live in it's like an alt. It's like he's in an alternate dimension somehow. <laughs> this is bizarro, bizarro Ali Dawa. <laughs> All right, let's see. Interesting. People are coming to Islam because of his intolerance. What happened to, you know, me singing? Hang on. Let's go back. We've got the new argument. So the science, perfect preservation's out, mathematical miracles out, uh, si yeah, scientific out. And now One. the real reason they're coming to Islam is his new argument, which is the, the argument from intolerance. That Islam, <laughs> is, Islam, Islam is... Don't take no sh Islam don't take none, man. Yeah. That's the argument. So hang on, it's, wow. you're about to see it, ladies and gentlemen, that Ali Dawa's new argument for Islam, since all the other arguments for Islam fail miserably, his new argument for Islam is basically the same thing that someone from the KKK would say. <laughs> we're, re we're really intolerant over here. Join us. <laughs> Let's see what he says here, because this is awesome. Oh, gosh, we love this guy. Some of you Hindus. All of you guys have got your tails between your legs, walking away. And you know what's interesting? People are coming to Islam because of his intolerance. What happened to, you know, me saying that, and we are proud of that. And I'll repeat it again. Yes? We are proud of that. Yes. And now, you know hold what I'm on. Talking uh, about? Yeah. What you happened, need to clarify. What happened to it? 
what happened to it? Uh, what happened to it is Alidawa, maybe you should go back to that video in which you said, and we are proud of that, and you should go through the comment section of that video, or you should just check the like dislike ratio with some tools that you, you might use. But just check the comment section, uh, see what people are saying in response to you saying that I and people like me should be executed and you are proud of that and you Muslims would be watching, you will see the reactions. Muslims, uh, many Muslims think, hey, what, are, what is this? What are you doing? Why are you saying this out here? Many uh, non-Muslims are saying, wow, okay, this is the true face of Islam. Thank you for showing the true face of Islam. Uh, Islam is a horrible religion. This is what people are saying. Uh, that's what is happening. You have thereby shown the hateful, intolerant face of Islam, which pushes people away and brings people into your religion like uh, Andrew Tate and Sneeko, who, mm -hmm. since you might be very short-sighted uh, and you might not see it, will not be good for your religion in the long run. They will not. They will be damaging for your religion in the long run. You should yeah, be realizing that. Yeah, guys, try to understand what, what, what uh, Ali Dawa is actually claiming right here. <laughs> he said that people are flocking to Islam because of the intolerance. And then the example he gives, I don't even think he clarifies it, but he says he, he knows we'll understand it. He knows everyone who's watching will understand what he when he says we're proud of that. That's his famous line that people have made songs about. But in context, it's about killing apostates and him bragging that once they take over, they're going to kill people like AP. And he's claiming that this is the reason that people are flocking to Islam, because Islam is the is the one that will kill apostates. That's why everyone wants to be Muslim right now. Powerful. Like, guys, I mean, can you even make sense of this? I mean, yes. Uh, is he uh, is he serious? Like, yeah, we're... That, if you can't tell David or AP that that's literally Wahi and Hikmah, uh, then this really <laughs> does show the terror. Don't laugh. I'm talking. He's the king of Hikmah. The king of <laughs> Hikmah. <laughs> Don't. This is the this is the disrespect that Ali is talking about. You laughing is really showing the real terror. This is Hikmah. <laughs> This is the wisdom. Look, Andrew Tate converted because, you know, we know the reason why he converted. We got sneak. Look, this is clear that people are converting because of this is why he meant. Stop hating. Stop. Powerful. Why? Is, isn't it amazing that that uh, he and um, his husband, Muhammad Hijab, they both go for the same sentiment. They both go for the same same idea. Uh, yes, yes, we are intolerant. Our religion is intolerant. Yes, we don't like uh you know, when people uh, insult and criticize our religion, yes, we will kill people. And you know what? Uh, you are scared now because you're hearing this. I mean, he's basically trying to copy uh, Muhammad Hijab in his squeaky <laughs> voice. But they both have that same sentiment, like this whole um, pretending that, that we are all scared of them, pretending that we are all scared of what is happening in Islam right now, and that this is actually a, a very great, a very grand thing. These people are completely out of touch with reality. <laughs> In, I mean, indeed, it's, uh, it's, uh, we talked about this the other day, Avery, but th they're just going all in, right? They're giving up. I mean, we are actually at the stage where they're literally giving up on arguments. They don't believe they will work. And so they're going all in on like Andrew Tate's method yeah. uh, of, Hey, everyone join us. We're going to be the strong ones. We're going to be the red <laughs> pills. We're going to fight the matrix. And Ali Dawa is looking at that saying, wow, if this is what people find impressive, if this is what Andrew, if this is what Andrew Tate found impressive, surely the entire world, which hates him, is going to be impressed by the same thing, yeah? <laughs> That's Hikma. That's, That's the Hikma. That these guys, these guys got, these guys definitely got the, uh, got yeah, the Hikma. Hikma. Um, oh yeah, and, let me, and uh, guess how those people will react to this? Who have been supporting the Muslims uh, for a very long time in the West, and who have made it possible for the Islamists to have their platforms and say whatever they want? Who have been censoring us for criticizing Muslims and criticizing Islam? Guess how those uh, liberal, leftist, progressive people will react to it? The more you open up the true face of Islam, I mean. <laughs> Please go and do that because we really need those people to wake up and see what's actually going on. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. That AP, I mean, AP, Avery, this guy does not realize what he's done because he's so low hikmah. Right? There, 
They're, I'm not saying that just because I'm not saying this just because he's dumb and he says stupid things. There are pretty high Hikma individuals who understand, guys. We need to we need to think a couple of moves ahead. This is a really really bad idea, hmm. and we're we'll watch a little more. But we're going to explain why Ali and the whole Tate crowd they have no idea how they have just doomed the Uma. I mean, they have yeah. no clue what they just did. They just made possibly the stupidest blunder in the history of blunders. I we will we'll watch this once we understand how good they had it that they were that they did not even realize how good they had it and what they've just done to undermine yeah. that advantage that they had. Dumbest like dumbest tactic in the history of forever. I challenge you to find something dumber than what these guys have just done. Let's go ahead and watch. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, in Islam, there is that capital punishment. We are proud of that, Alhamdulillah. Every legislation in the Quran and the Sunnah, we are proud of that. And I know you're watching this and biting your tongue out of, your fingers out of rage like Allah says in the Quran. Die yeah. in your rage. Look Millions and outraged. I'm outraged. Yeah, we're, we're so enraged right now. Oh no, <laughs> Dali, Ali Dawa, Ali Dawa is destroying Islam from within. Oh, we're so, we're so outraged. Oh no, what are we going to do? Leave Islam alone, Ali Dawa, leave Islam alone. Don't destroy it. <laughs> um, <laughs> play, play the video. Oh my goodness. This is, this is awesome. This is awesome. Uh, my, I want to keep watching this over and over and over yeah. again. But let's go and watch yeah, you're not getting tired of this video, bro. Oh no, I love this video. This is great. This is great. Just, just let him, let him speak. Of people He's are coming to Islam. Alhamdulillah. What happens to all your arguments of Islam is treats women. Islam says this punishment for ex-Muslims. Islam says da da da. Oh, look, how bad, look how bad it is. People are still flocking to Islam. Alhamdulillah. Where? <laughs> Sneakle and Tate. <laughs> Sneakle. Okay, that's two. <laughs> what else you got? And by the way, notice we point. This is the same guy in another video. Brothers and sisters, a hundred thousand Muslims are leaving Islam every year, and he didn't even get that right. That's just in the United States. These are the same guys who are running around the avalanche of apostasy. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And as soon as they have to thump their chest, it's oh, you're, you're, you're screaming and crying and running with your tails between the legs because everyone's converting to Islam based on our intolerance. Like, I mean, if you at the same time make videos uh, asking for charity because people are leaving Islam and your child is going to become an apostate and there's an avalanche and this will doom us, but at the same time also go out and say people are flocking to Islam and this makes you this makes you so mad. Islam is growing. If you put those two things out together at the same time, then I just I cannot take you as an honest person. There's well, just no well, I think that we're missing something here, guys, and I think this is the wahi that that takes place here is that you know and there's probably a mathematical miracle behind this that when when there is someone with a with a name with some type of popularity like a andrew tate or maybe some famous ufc fighter or something like that um that if a person has a name that kind of equates to a plurality of people so if there is an and if there's an andrew tate that, that, that just converted to Islam, that is people flocking, you know, mm -hmm. because he's so popular. So that's yeah. probably the mathematical miracle behind it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's technically correct. There are two people flocking to Islam. <laughs> so mm -hmm. people are yeah. flocking to Islam. I guess, you could, yeah. <laughs> I guess you can defend that. What about all the people who are leaving it? Uh, that's yeah, been corrupted. Guess, yeah. Yeah. That's been corrupted. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's watch a little more Ali Dawa here. <laughs> It's as simple as that. And we praise our Lord. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when people are coming in multitudes to Islam, Alhamdulillah, we praise. All your efforts that you did for 10 years, it's all gone in the bin, not even the recycle bin. You can't even what, what is he talking? All our efforts? You guys are, we spend years exposing your lies until even you admit that they're lies. <laughs> right. And as you're admitting that they're lies, Islam is crumbling from within to the point where you've got these uh, sheikhs in Pakistan saying, "Do we need to? Do we need to just to bomb entire cities down to nothing to stop the spread of apostasy?" That's in Pakistan. That's right. Sharia. That's the Sharia hellhole of the world, and they can't even control the the apostasy rate there. And it's just getting started. And what's your response? Oh, we told her, and we got Andrew Tate. You see, that's why you're all scared. I. 
<laughs> hey, it's get it's getting pretty desperate, isn't it? Man, like, like does do, do, does Ali's do Ali's followers even believe what he's saying at this point? I mean, do they even take it seriously? The chest the chest thumping. Yeah, I think about that sometimes. I think about, uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering how they are. I mean, are they really sitting there and thinking, well, yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Uh, Brother Alita, well, that makes so much sense. I mean, do his followers actually react like that? Or do they think, oh, okay, I mean, you're, I think you're exaggerating here a little bit. <laughs> or do they just, but maybe they're not listening. Maybe, maybe they don't even pay attention to anything he says. They're just following and you know promoting him for no reason because he probably became popular at some point, and that's yeah. that's it. They're probably just entertained at this point. It's entertaining, yeah. you know. Yeah. At this point, it's tough. Yeah. So the uh, comment here is uh, Avery's channel, God Logic Apologetics. Yes, I added a link to the description box. Everyone should be subscribed to uh, to God Logic. All right. Thank let's you, see. Guys. We only have about another minute and a half of Ali Dawa here. Let's see how much more damage he can do. Tackle it. It's gone to the waist like poo. It's wait, wait. gone. What? what is what? Our Lord. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when people are coming in multitudes to Islam, Alhamdulillah, we praise all your efforts that you did for 10 years. It's all gone in the bin, not even the recycle bin. You can't even recycle it. It's gone to the waste, like poo. It's gone. Halas. Wait, all our efforts to show that the scientific <laughs> argument was complete nonsense, and now you've agreed with us, and I would regard that as massive progress. It's all wor It's all been pointless. Yeah, that, that, that is, that's a really huge point here. Like, uh, let's think about what, what we're just saying. Years of apologetics and polemics against Islam, no Muslim listening to us until later on it's breaking down, it's breaking down, it's breaking down until they're, the, the, the guys who are their face is now admitting what we have been saying for all these years. Yeah, we, yeah. In, a, in other words, in other words, we were telling the truth. Their guys were lying. Ali right. Dawa just admits, hey, Christians were, and atheists were telling the truth about what the Quran actually says and about whether our argument is good or bad. Christians and atheists and Hindus were all telling the truth about how bad this argument is. Muslim dais were lying. And now I'm admitting that we were lying the entire time and they were telling the truth. But this is such a, uh, but ha ha ha, now you guys are going to die in your rage. What? I, I feel it's like my birthday right now, man. I feel like it's my <laughs> birthday. It's my birthday. Where's my cake? Because it's my birthday right now. That's what I feel like. And he's, he, he, yeah. actually, he, he knows, it. He, knows he, he knows how pathetic this is. Oh, Gosh. boy. All right, let's, let's. I don't even. I don't even understand the structure of this video. I don't even get it because he. It is titled uh, "Does the Quran have scientific miracles?" Then he says, "I will repeat one more time that it is complete nonsense," and then he goes into and the rest of the video. The most of the video is just and you Islamophobes and you ex Muslims, you murtads, you are scared because people are. What I, this guy doesn't even know what he's doing. <laughs> By the way, you you content creators who are watching, uh, our dawah is getting debunked, and we're proud of that. It's a good title for a YouTube video <laughs> on this whole topic. That's good. That's really good. <laughs> oh boy. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Cedric here says, uh, "What will you guys do when everything else is debunked?" AP said it might be two hundred years from now. I don't know that the rate at which everything is crumbling. I don't think, I mean, I think another argument's going to go like a year from now. I think another one will go. And I think they're, I don't, I don't think they recover from this ever. And I don't think it's going to take 200 years. I said prior to this uh, that I'm a prophet and I, I, I say uh, that Islam will be gone in 200 years, but uh, I'm waiting right now. I must stand by. There might be, that might be abrogated and a new revelation <laughs> might come. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to wait and check on that. Uh, Peace be upon you, AP. Peace be upon you. <laughs> Thank right. you. Back to our good friend, the Dawah debunker himself, Ali Dawah. People are flocking to Islam. So me seeing the argument of science and miracles debunked, it is debunked. And guess what? We don't even need it. We don't even we need don't it. We don't even need it. Alhamdulillah. We've got intolerance. So an example and, 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 and nasiyah to give to all of you guys, alhamdulillah, is very simple. You do not read into the Quran. We do not make that mistake by reading and this verse means that. Oh, now, humble. is there certain facts, for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the depths of the ocean, where when if you put your hand up, there are layers and layers of darkness, we can say, wow, that is very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> we, can, we can say, wow. If, if, uh, if, if you stick your hand down there deep enough and you can't see your hand anymore, uh, alhamdulillah. 
a lot. I don't of understand. Fun. He 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 comes with one of the worst arguments for scientific miracles, and thereby decides that uh, that the Quran doesn't have scientific miracles because it was obviously wrong. And from that from that uh, he goes to <laughs> another one of the worst arguments ever. Yeah. and says, but it still has impressive things like. And that. we could say we could say wow. <laughs> we could say wow. We could say wow. How how could anyone have known something that anyone who's ever swam in his whole life could know? <laughs> There's no this way guy, that yeah. anyone, except anyone who's ever been swimming at any point ever, or who's ever met anyone who's been swimming at any point, there's no way to know that except for someone who's actually been in water. How could the, how could Muhammad have known that? That's actually what he said. Let, let me back up. So, okay. so look, I, this, guy, this, guy, oh. this video is so awesome. He starts off. He starts off. Let me say it. In 73 different ways. This <laughs> argument is stupid and it's been debunked. Zach and Mike was a liar. Uh, uh, Ahmed think that was a liar. There was all liars. Them's all liars. I'm the one who's telling you the truth, yeah? A new <laughs> argument is how intolerant we's gonna be, yeah? We's gonna be the most intolerant people. We's gonna be just like the KKK and them guys that follow the dude with the little mustache. We's gonna be just like them. We's all gonna be like that. We're gonna be go take, go take, go take, talk G, your G, talk G. That's gonna be how we's winning all these people around to our side. That's what we'll be doing, yeah? But yo, since I was on the topic of the scientific miracles, you do got some things like, oh, it gets dark in the water, yeah? And our mind is still blown by this. Our mind is blown, yeah? Because this is why you you unbelievers is running with your tail between the legs. You're scared of the amazing insight that I have already said is debunked, except this yeah. one maybe about the darkness in, in the deep water. Yeah, so ha, in your face, you got schooled. Oh That's, this God. is who we're dealing with, right? That is perfect. Wow. Let me perfect back this. Though. Let me back this thing up a little bit and uh, see what he said. Wow. Is there certain facts, for example, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the depths of the ocean, where when if you put your hand up, there are layers and layers of darkness. Layers for the game. That is very interesting because now it's like tiramisu, you know, it got layers. <laughs> like tiramisu, we got the layers. See, how could Allah know about tiramisu? Tiramisu ain't even been invented yet. Yeah, how is this possible? But yet, the seven ozone layers, they's got the layers like the tiramisu. I, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I, I'm going back. I got to believe in the miracles. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I feel like we're gonna have to. I feel like we're gonna have to keep going back to this point and see. <laughs> Let me back it up again. And see what he's saying. Yo, because I, I want to. We, we will actually, since this is apparently the only thing that you can be impressed what impressed by anymore in the Quran. We'll go ahead and take a look at it. All right. Now, is there certain facts? For example, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the depths of the ocean, where when if you put your hand up, there are layers and layers of darkness. We can say, wow, that is very interesting because now recent discoveries do show that. So <laughs> recent discoveries have shown that, yeah, as you swim down in the water, things get darker. Like you couldn't look in the water and say, hey, it looks dark down there. That's not, no one could do that unless you was by water or something or went for a swim. So how could this be known? NASA has just found this out today. Jacques, you do know that Jacques Cousteau actually went down in the water and saw that it'd be dark down there, yeah? He found that it'd be dark down there. How is this possible? Oh my goodness. Uh, is this a return? Is, it's like he just said that it's all debunked and stupid and now he brings it back at the end and ruins everything. Oh, wow. This is Totally you can't use it, but I'm saying to you... Oh, wait, he says totally you can't use it, but you can be impressed by it. <laughs> science as a yardstick, this is wrong. No, Quran is our yardstick. We don't say because science changes. One day it says this, next day it says that. It's as simple as that. So that's the reason why we say oh. there are certain things in the Quran which... What's up? I, I just have a... Okay, if the Quran is the yardstick. The, the Quran is the yardstick. So... Does that mean that there there really there really are seven heavens? Like, is, does it does that mean that the actual fact of the matter is that the earth really was created before there was ever space and heavens and the stars? Does that like that means that that's the actual matter of fact now? You're being too logical. Matter, right? 
he has never thought that through. You're being too logical. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm thinking too much. I should have just recited. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stupid, stupid. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, how could a man know this? If it was from a man, <laughs> not from God. <laughs> he's he's still on he's still on the darkness. How could a man know? <laughs> then it gets darker as you go down farther in the water. I really want to ask the him, ocean. how, how could yes? a man have known what exactly? What, what, what exactly? Please tell me that. Please tell me what exactly. That there's, that, I, I remember going to going swimming and, and just and, and looking down as a mere human being and, and seeing that it gets darker and darker and darker and darker and you can't see it. It looks very scary. So um, apparently Allah can do that too. And Muhammad can do that too. And that is a... That is a that is a great miracle. Yes, it is. All right, let's see what he's got here. She's like, how could a man know this? If it was from a man, not from God, who went to the depths of the ocean? Yes, thousands of meters down to know that there's layers and layers of thought. Look, he's saying you have to go thousands and thousands of meters down. So, <laughs> wait, thousands and thousands of meters down. So that's thousands and thousands. So you'd have to go at least four thousand meters down into the water to realize. Then it gets darker as you go down. <laughs> Wrong, Ali. <laughs> Dive into the water and swim oh. for a few seconds, and you'll see it gets darker and colder very quickly. Yeah. This is the power um, of Islam. The power you are is, witnessing the power of Islam, the power, the miracle of Allah and the Quran. This is amazing, man. Look at that. So Ali has Ali has demonstrated to his credit that he knows as much about the ocean as he does about the ozone layers. <laughs> All the different ozone layers. That is my point. So once again, for all my fans out there, the Islamophobes, the cowards, the little weasels, alhamdulillah, Islam is growing. Yes? It's okay. growing. For those who are like Ahmed Jab says who are intellectually molested. Yes, it is debunked. Right. Did you see that? You've been intellectually molested. Have you noticed that they always they always talk about like some version of molested or this or that when they talk yeah, about yeah. what they're doing to people? Yeah. Like they, their mind automatically goes there. And he's getting this from a... Uh, you know, Captain Golden Showers himself, uh, Muhammad Hijab, who introduced many people in our live streams to a lot of perverted stuff just because people had to look it up. They didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, he's the expert. Well, let's see. Yes. Uh, okay. uh, Muhammad Hijab, actually, um, he's so obsessed with that stuff that even when he was talking to me in the discussion to make a point about about morals or something, that's the only thing he could go to. Uh, the example of a woman who is being uh, brutally I think gang raped or something like that. And uh, he was talking about that. He, they always have to go to something like this. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's just very strange. It's, it's, always, it's always something perverted. That's where their minds yeah. instantly go when they're critiquing something. And, and these are the guys who, oh, we only responded the best way, yeah? Really? <laughs> all right. Uh, we're, we're, we're almost at the end here. So let's see what he wraps up with. He's uh, saying how scared we all are and uh, how we're all running. Uh, be because, because, Look at us. because we because you all been intellectually molested yeah for those who like Mohammed Jab says who are intellectually molested yes it is debunked and we don't need it we don't need it Islam doesn't need anything we got our intolerance people are flocking to Islam our dawah videos people are accepting Islam left right center so die in your <laughs> rage that's all I want to say alhamdulillah and brothers and sisters may Allah bless you guys inshallah till next time assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh He's trying to provoke oh. anger. Oh, he's trying to provoke a reaction here. He's trying to provoke anger here, and he actually thinks he actually thinks he's doing it. He he's actually thinks we'll man. be watching this, and and we will be like, oh, oh no, how could this be? I'm outraged right now. Like that's what oh, he thinks. No. We, will you think so? <laughs> we need to we need to respond and just com be completely enraged because of that powerful whatever that I'm was. I'm so angry. Oh, I'm so mad. Do, do y'all do y'all think that he really like he like honestly when he sits down he lays down at night that he like really believes what he's saying? I or, can't. Or I don't say how. Yeah, because it has to be a. It looks like a performance to me. Obviously, you got to save face, but there's. I, I don't. I don't think that he believes what he's saying. Like that. That wouldn't be. I, I can't see that. Well, there are there are two things. Um, there is uh, Al Dawa often lies. He, and he knows that he lies when he's oh, called yeah. out. Mm -hmm. he, he just ignores you calling him out and he continues lying. And, and that, this is confirmed. This is a fact I can demonstrate it on, on many occasions. He actually lies to people. Uh, but then um, on the other hand, he's also uh, firmly um, you know, deluded in believing that he is actually making great points and 
that he is completely destroying and humiliating us, and he actually believes that. And um, an intelligent person would not believe that, but he's he's not very intelligent, so he does believe that. So I, I do believe that he actually thinks he's he's completely making fantastic points here right now. Wow, that's tough. I'm, I am loving these. Uh, I'm loving the points, but I mean, since since the only thing. Since for some reason he defended it not as a scientific miracle, but as something that should just shock and amaze Muslims, um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and check out. Let's go ahead and check out. Let me get rid of that and get the screen up here. All right, here we got it. <laughs> Here's the argument, ladies and gentlemen. We'll read oh. verse 39 just for context. Uh, pick a translation. Um, we'll just start off with the pickthal at the top. As yeah. for those who disbelieve, their deeds are as a mirage in the desert. Oh my goodness, no one could ever know about mirage in the desert. Yeah, how did Allah know this? It's so amazing. Uh, the thirsty one supposeth it to be water till he cometh unto it and findeth it not, and findeth in the place thereof Allah who payeth him his due, and Allah is swift at reckoning. So you got uh, a bunch of translations. Oh, no. Hey, Avery, these translations say different things. <laughs> they're different things in the English. I wonder what we're going to do now that there are all these differences in the English translation. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hey, it's false. Hey, hey, Avery. Hey, Avery, it's about to get better. You ready for this? I'm ready, man. I'm ready. ready. Let's look at a couple translations of verse 40. So this is the, I guess he doesn't want to call it a, a, a scientific miracle anymore. Just something you're supposed to be amazed at. Yeah. It is a wow. It is so a here scientific you go. wow. Yeah. Here you go. Ready? Or, read the pickthal again right there. Or as darkness on a vast abysmal sea, there covereth him a wave, talking about the unbelievers and describing, you know, their, uh, their sinfulness and rebellion against God. There covereth him a wave, above which is a wave, above which is a cloud, layer upon layer of darkness. When he holdeth out his hand, he can scarce see it. Why? Because it's dark. And he for whom Allah hath not appointed light, for him there is no light. Now notice, Pickthal has, or as darkness on a vast abysmal sea. So this is like there's darkness on the surface of the deep. But we'll, we'll look at a couple more. Or the unbeliever's state is like the depths of darkness in a vast ocean, in a vast deep ocean. So there it looks like um, deep inside the ocean. But guess what? If, if one is... If one verse is saying it's darkness on a on a sea, and the other says it's darkness in a sea, mm -hmm. Avery, you've got a contradiction in the translation of the Quran. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what, keep in mind, according to Sheikh Uthman, doesn't matter what the Arabic is, doesn't matter what the Arabic is. It only mm -hmm. matters that the English has a contradiction. English here. has a contradiction. Now, now you got it. So uh, <laughs> notice, yeah, notice these ladies and gentlemen, this is what Ali is, is saying is miraculous here. Uh, so Yusuf Ali or the unbeliever state is like the depths of darkness in a vast deep ocean, overwhelmed with billow topped by billow, topped by dark clouds. So the fact that it says, let's go with darkness in the ocean, like depths of darkness in the ocean. Let's just see what the rest of them translate this as. Or is like the darkness in a vast deep sea. Uh, that's the Hilali Khan, Shakir. Or like utter, utter darkness in the deep sea. Uh, Share Ali, or their deeds are like thick layers of darkness spread over a vast and deep sea. So there it's on top. Mm -hmm. Khalifa, uh, that of being in total darkness in the midst of a violent ocean. Arbery, or they are as shadows upon a sea obscured by a billow. Uh, Palmer, mm -hmm. or like darkness on a deep sea. So they seem to be interpreting, they can't even agree on what's being said here. Yeah. They can't even agree on what's being said here. But let's go with the most generous version of this, which is what's supposed to be amazing. Darkness in a deep, dark sea. That's something that, according to Ali, has only been verified recently, and no one could have known that ever. Correct. Why, why, aren't, why aren't you guys converting right now? <laughs> AP is not letting me. <laughs> Aiden Walid, how can anyone know this? We are denying <laughs> the truth. Wow. Yeah, AP won't let me convert it's for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, is anyone actually legitimately impressed by something that? Here, let me let me let me put it let me put it like this, ladies and gentlemen. 
You take a thousand kids who've been swimming, a thousand eight year old kids who've been swimming in more than just a pool, because you can, you know, you can be you can swim in a pool and not see that things get darker. If you've been in a lake or an ocean and you just swim down a few feet, you start seeing it get darker really quick. Like or if you're just in a boat, and you're looking down, it's like, oh, I can't see what's at the bottom there because it gets dark real quick. <laughs> is anyway think keep in mind this was his number two <laughs> this was his okay now that the seven now that the seven layers of the ozone has been debunked now i still have to got to put this out about this powerful point even though it's not a good argument it's something that will blow your mind <laughs> yeah. you know it, it, it probably would have impressed me if all the english translations agreed on whether or not the deep the, the darkness was on or in the sea so I'm confused right now. Um, my 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 belief is being halted because of that. Hey, wait a minute. Mrs. Apostate said onions have layers. Oh, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Hey, wait a minute. Scientists have recently confirmed that onions do in fact have layers. There's no way that anyone could have known that before now. That means it's a miracle. Wait a minute. It's not just the apostate prophet. She's a prophet too. So there are female prophets. Shocker! <laughs> wow, we're dealing with so, the, the 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 verse literally just says um, it compares the state of a disbeliever to a darkness in a sea. It is deep, covered by a wave. On top of it, another wave. On top of it, a cloud, darkness. Uh, on top of each other. When he puts out his hand, he can hardly see it. That's what it says. So like a, like an ocean, like a, a water, there are waves upon it, upon which there are also waves, upon which there are clouds, which are dark and dark. And he stretches his hand out and he can barely see his hand. Now, I don't even know what to say. What, you know, the problem <laughs> I don't is, even know what to say. You, you can't even refute that. See, Allah <laughs> has, he has you so confounded, you can't even refute it. You know, you're just laughing nervously. You can't even refute it. amazing. This is amazing. I don't know why. What I have been doing this whole, all, all these, this whole decade, all of these years. What? Why have I been trying to refute Islam so much when it is so clear from this verse that it, it comes directly from Allah? Because who could have known this? Wow! Wow! And this, this, this is the champion of Dawa right there. I've been looking for a reason to, 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 you know, take my Shahada for over a year now. You guys can ask Chris Claus, ask, ask the people in the chat. I've been looking for a reason. Now, I think it's been shattered. Like, it's tough. I was really leaning on the scientific miracles, guys. Uh, so I don't know, man. I don't know. There, there is one more massive and possibly, I mean, apart from him acknowledging yet again that the scientific argument has been debunked and it's garbage and then him trying to give trying to throw his followers a bone who are who are thinking oh but uh, but the science is so impressive and he tries to give an example oh yeah there there are things you should be impressed about and it's something that anyone who's ever been swimming could have told you um <laughs> apart from that apart from that and i mean possibly a more important more important point uh did you guys you guys caught it he said that the the new case for islam the real reason people are going to be converting is because of Islam's intolerance and willingness to kill people who get out of line. He said that, right? You, mm -hmm. Did you guys catch that? Mm -hmm. and we're proud of that. I'll say it again. And we're proud of that. Now, guys, the, the question that we would want to ask Ali Dao, keep in mind, he said that. He said they're proud, he's proud of the they're proud of the capital punishments. Anyone who's at Speaker's Corner walking up to Ali Dawa, please go up and ask him about various groups and what's going to happen to them under Sharia if they seize control, right? So, hey, Ali Dawa, you've acknowledged that if you guys are able to establish an Islamic state, people like AP are going to be executed. You said you're proud of that, right? Yeah, yeah, we're proud that that was going to kill them, yeah. Okay, what about critics of Islam, people who make fun of Muhammad? What's going to happen to them? Keep in mind, you're proud of it. You're not going to hide it because you're proud of it, right? Oh, yeah, we're going to do it to them too. Okay, what about gay people? What are you going to do to gay people in an Islamic state? Um, people who are, I mean, let, let's just, let's say they're openly gay. 
What are you going to do to them? And keep in mind, you're proud of the death penalty. So explain to us what you're going to do. What are you going to do to trans people? What are you going to do to what are you just go just go down the list? Yeah. Go down, go there, especially go to the uh, to have the a gates. list, have especially a checklist that stuff. So that uh, all of those people around the world who have been defending these Muslim apologists so far and who have been making sure that we cannot criticize them and they can always be excused so that mm-hmm. they too hear some really, really bad truth that they need to hear. So yeah. That stuff should be brought up. <laughs> and by, by the way, guys, um, do you see the mistake? I mean, keep in mind, not everyone necessarily is going to go with Ali Dawa on the down this road. But with Andrew Tate and Sneeko all saying, ah, Islam is so red pill. This is the only thing that's going to save everyone from the far left and LGBTQ stuff and so on. They're going down that road. That road. Do I, I, this is what I was talking about when I said this is like the biggest tactical blunder in the history of tactical blunders. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about all the all the morons who invaded Russia in the winter, you giant morons. Uh, That's nothing compared to what Ali Dawa wants to do right now, which, guys, every every Muslim in the world, please follow what he just said right here, please. I'm begging you. I'm begging you to take what he just said seriously. Um, Do you guys understand how bad this is? Because I think like. Break it, break it down for me because, you know, maybe, maybe what, you, should, what, you, should, you should explain it. You should explain yeah. it, David. Yeah. Well, okay. So here, so here four years, four years, even when you had terrorist attacks, even when you had nine 11, uh, even when you had, uh, you know, the seven, seven bombings and so on, all the, you know, killing people with trucks, the Charlie Hebdo massacres, all, all that stuff. Every single time you had something like that, <clears throat> We would try to show people why that was happening. We would say, hey, look, we can show you in Islam's most trusted sources why this thing that we all agree is horrible and bad is actually commanded by this religion. Mm -hmm. And without fail, what happened? Politicians, journalists, the education system, Hollywood, they all came down. Anyone has a problem with this is Islamophobe. Anyone who says that this has something to do with Islam, that this has something to do with Islam, anyone who says that is a racist, Islamophobic, hate mongering bigot. Yeah. And anyone with power would silence anyone who's doing that. Right. Anyone, it, it, they, anyone with power would silence the people who are doing this. I got banned over and over and over again until I gave up on Facebook just for pointing out. I, I would, Same. I would post, Same. I would post things like, "Hey, here's a screenshot of a guy who just threatened to kill me," and they would ban me for pointing out that I got sure. threatened, that a guy was threatening me. Right. Because they didn't want people to get mad that this guy, that this Muslim was, was threatening uh, a Christian, threatening to kill a Christian. So they kept doing that until I just say, uh, fine with it. All the, all the bans I've had over the years, Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube, it's all, you, you criticize Muhammad, um, and so we have to ban you for this. Mm-hmm. So you had, again, politicians, the media as a whole, uh, the education system as a whole, re- re- get get your child's textbook, read, if they have a, a world history book, read what it says about Christianity and read what it says about Islam. You're in for a, you're in for quite a, quite a surprise on, on the kid gloves and how much they praise Islam, right? Yeah, this yeah. has been going on for a long, long time. In other words, when people are trying to, to put out valid, perfectly valid criticisms of Islam based on the impact it's been having on the world, we are shouted down and marginalized by people who are on on the far political left, who nevertheless have wielded lots of power in the media and in politics and in Hollywood and with the education system and social media, and they're able to silence people who are criticizing Muhammad. Yeah. I have to say that is a very nice position to be in. In fact, when I would get banned on YouTube, they would say you have criticized a you have criticized a protected group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, Muslims are a protected group? Are Christians a protected group? Christians on a, on a global scale, Christians are persecuted far more than Muslims. But right. you can say anything you want about Christian, and yet I I'm like, what? I didn't call for I didn't call for violence or anything like that. I just said why they're wrong. Mm-hmm. And nope, that's enough. This is a this is a protected group. You have to get banned for that. Right? That happens over and over again. So anyway, long story short. Islam, Muhammad and the Quran have been shielded from criticism and not just that, but the the supporters of the supporters of like mass Islamic immigration and so on to Western countries, 
those have tended to be people uh, on one side of the political spectrum who were hoping that by this mass immigration, they would get future voters who are going to be loyal to their causes yeah, and so yeah. on. And yeah. now, in spite of having all of this protection for all of these years, you're talking decades of protection from pol from people on the far left that are protecting Muhammad and the Quran from criticism in spite of all of that years of undying loyalty, no matter how many terrorist attacks. I mean, do terrorists were actually walking into gay clubs and gunning people down. Who would rush to who would rush to the defense of Islam every single time? Politicians, journalists, uh, educators, entertainers and social media uh, CEOs yeah. every single time. And now Muslims are saying, ah, Oh, actually, we're changing sides on everything. And what we're going to do, we're going to show you how intolerant we are. And we're just going to execute everybody on your side, on your side. As soon as we get power, we're going to execute you all. And they're announcing it. And they're siding with Andrew Tate, who's who's against all the wokeism and so on. So yeah, what? Yeah. So again, it doesn't it doesn't mean so far that all Muslims are going to agree with this. But if you get enough people who say, yeah, Andrew Tate and Sunniko and Ali Dao are right, we need to go down that road. What happens if you lose that protection? What happens if all the people who've been protecting and shielding your prophet and your book from criticism suddenly view you as a threat and an enemy? Yeah. Wow. What happens? What happens wow. if now we can freely, openly expose Muhammad on May? I mean, on prime time news? Yeah, yeah. What ha what happens when wow. I can say what when I can blast when I can blast? your prophet and your mm -hmm. book all over social media and the CEOs are loving it because they yeah. view you as an enemy. What, yeah. ha what happens when the education system starts Please. teaching accurately about Muhammad and the Quran and their impact in 1400 years of jihad because they are sick to death of what you're doing? What happens when Hollywood says, let's make an accurate film yeah. about the history of Islam yeah. and what really happened? What happens in those situations? You guys oh, just please. traded it for Sneeko. You just traded. <laughs> you had the sweetest deal of yeah. anyone in history. You had the greatest dream deal of every ideology in history. You, you are protected by everyone who has any degree of power. Yeah. And now you're yeah. throwing it all away because we're going to go with Andrew Tate. He's the top G, yeah? And you don't <laughs> realize how insanely stupid you are. All you had to do was wave your little pride flag and pretend a little longer. Oh, that's all you had to do is wave that little pride flag and say, yeah, we're all on the same page. Wink, wink. <laughs> we're not going to slaughter you all as soon as we get in power. Wink, wink. That's all you had to do. That's all you had to do. Instead, you got to go there. Oh, no, don't talk. Gee, good luck with that, guys. If that wow. if that alliance breaks down, you think you got an avalanche of apostasy now? Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. They're, yeah. they're destroying it. These, oh. these, these uh, low hikma, low hikma dais are... Uh, doing you pointed out we we couldn't have dreamed of breaking down this alliance and they're doing it for us normally i would think david that you shouldn't be uh you know spelling all of this out and, and saying all of this because uh you know you could be you could be i'm um, telling them that they're basically wrong. making a mistake but in the case of al dawa he's probably watching this and he's like oh look they're so mad they're so mad dying in your rage they're just pretending they're dying in their rage. rage oh look david's having a heart attack in his rage ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm dying of laughter, Ali. Are you really trying to get us to die of laughter? Because you got a better chance of that, more Budro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so man. keep going, Ali. Dawa, keep going. It's fantastic. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Go, great Ali. Job. Go, Ali. Go. Go, Ali. Go, Ali. Go. This, 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 this is really no different. It's no different from from years ago when you you said we're just gonna watch the apology the apologists who come out, the people like Muhammad Hijab and characters like this who take the forefront and start destroying. Uh, Islam from the inside. You you said this and you said we got to watch. I, I say this a lot. I always bring this up because peace be upon you, oh, oh prophet, David Wood. You said this before and they still did it. It didn't matter that you said it publicly. Yeah. They st it still happened. So saying it here is not going to... There's, it's still Ali Dawa. It's still Muhammad Hijab. It's still Andrew Tate. They're still going to be them regardless. And we're just going to watch it all happen. That... What you just did, that, that take is crazy. That's a crazy take. That, right that is true. That is true. David has been saying that for a very long time now. Yeah. And it is exactly playing out as you as you said it. So <laughs> I am said, a prophet, but I have to give you that one. Yeah. The real rat, the real masker said, Allah's the best of divers. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> He's the best of divers. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. So uh, Yo, anyway, the Internet is crazy. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Yeah, you guys, you know, you know, it's weird. It's like for the first like 10 years of doing stuff, I tried to keep my plotting inside my own head. Like, I don't want to know what I'm plotting that, uh, you know, I'm going to get them to admit all this stuff over many years of time. I realize I, I've said before, it was actually watching Jordan Peterson at one point when he, he was going somewhere to speak. And he said, oh, when I get there, they're going to shout me down, but I'm just going to keep talking and they're going to keep screaming and they're going to try everything to, or to get it to, to shout me down. And I was like, well, they're not going to do that now because you told it, you said it, you announced it ahead of time as you're going in and you announced it all over the news and so on that, that that's what they're going to do when you get there. They can't do it now. They got to do something different. They do, they do it exactly what he said. And I saw other people there saying, hey, when I get here, this is what they're going to do. And they always do exactly what the person said. And I was like, mm -hmm. once you get conditioned to a certain point and you have no plan B and you have nowhere else to go, you're going to do that. And you can, t you can announce it a million times ahead of time and say exactly what they're going to do. And they have yeah. no choice because they have no other, they have no plan B. So now that the arguments are, are collapsing, now that all these arguments are collapsing, what do they got? All they've got left is the top G route. Try to impress everyone with your intolerance. Ali Dawa says, that's what we're going to do. We're going to show that we's intolerance. We're going to kill everybody. Um, <laughs> and yet that will impress some people. That will impress some some teenagers who are, who are worried about things and not sure where everything's going. And they're going to sign on. If you're willing to trade that for this unparalleled degree of protection that you've had for decades, please make that deal, Ali. Please make that deal. <laughs> Fantastic. Ali Dawa, uh, please let us know where we can support you for your great work. And please, please keep going. Please continue. I'm I'm very proud of you. Uh, and I will be watching. Yeah, man. Amen to that AP. Listen, uh, shout out to you, Ali Dawa. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, give you just another shout out on my channel, bro. Um, you know, I'm gonna say a prayer for you tonight. Uh, <laughs> and when I wake up, <clears throat> you know, so man, right. I'm really, we, we're, we're pushing for you, bro. We're pushing for you. Do not give up. Don't let none of those Islamophobes tell you any different. Keep we are with going. You. Yeah, we are with you. And mm -hmm. Ali, under no circumstances should you ever listen to anyone who has even a single drop of hikmah. Ever. <laughs> Do not listen to Sajid when he tells you how moronic you are being right now. Do not listen to Sajid. Sajid is going to say, you, you keep saying stupid stuff and Sajid keeps pointing out. Just have your followers shout him down and say that he's jealous because of the tremendous impact you're having. Only, only listen to the people who are cheering you and praising you no matter what you do. Only listen to the complete undying yes men that you have around you. Only listen to them. You'll never be, you'll never be steered wrong. Just, uh, keep that up for us, Ali. We love you. <laughs> We do. We all right. Ali. <laughs> all right. Final thoughts, anyone? Any uh, final thoughts before we close out? We got through all that. Uh, AP, uh, anything else? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, basically, I basically said what I think about Ali Dawa. I think he's doing a fantastic job. He should keep going. Um, I know he's he's watching this probably later or now and thinking, hey, they're actually dying inside. But uh, no, we're not. We are, oh, okay, maybe I, I, I get it. I grant it. Maybe we are actually outraged and we are dying inside. You just believe that and you continue what you're doing because so far you're doing a fantastic job, Ali Dawa. Yes, yes. Trust Sneeko. Trust uh, Andrew Tate. They are your new uh, heroes, your new rescue for Islam. And do exactly what you're doing. Tell everybody what Islam really says. I have done it. David has done it. But nobody believes us. So now it's your turn. Go ahead. You're doing it very, very well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Uh, Avery, what do you got coming up, man? What do you got coming up? What are people? Uh, well, what are, What are people going to find on your channel, and uh, what are you going to be working on here in the new near future? For sure. So uh, yeah. So for the people that's asking, my channel is God Logic Apologetics. Um, I was just at a Pride Festival uh, yesterday, so I have a lot of footage that's going to post with my interactions. But there, there was a lot of affirming churches, affirming churches with their tents there. So I had a lot of discussions with uh, these so-called priests and pastors uh, who were there supporting pride and stuff like that. So you guys will see that footage. Um, also, and, and but most immediately, I have to get working on this video that I just had with Sheikh Uthman and Sneeko. That's going to be uploaded within the next day or so. I'm gonna work on it right now. So stay tuned. If you guys wanna see that conversation, hit that subscribe button. I got Logic Apologetics, man. Uh, and it seems like every encounter you have with Sheikh Uthman 
<laughs> he has to lie. He lies about something. Mm -hmm. And then the lie gets exposed later. Mm -hmm. And so all the, the Christians, the atheists, Hindus, everyone sees the lie exposed later and they go, look at this liar. But his followers seem to be of the mentality of if you lie right there and you get away with it, even for that moment, it's good. And, 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 and we worship you as our new hero. It really seems mm -hmm. like that. It's like as long as you get a, as long as you get away with the lie for a few days, you're good to go. And no one's ever going to hold you to account. And then. When these guys go off the rails and fake hate crimes against themselves or take out entire arguments, guys, they were already narcissists. You programmed them to believe that they could get away with anything. And now you're reaping the rewards of what you've done with your dies. And mm -hmm. we are loving it. All right. So everyone, uh, be sure to follow. Um, be sure to follow Avery. Link is in the description box. And we'll catch you all next time. Stay away from Islam. Peace.